Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here, bringing you all another Market Watch episode. We are talking about a little bit of everything today, including some cards that maybe haven't reached their full potential quite yet, and do have the possibility of jumping up in price in the near future. Also do keep in mind that we have Brothers of Legend coming out officially this weekend. It brings with it some really cool new cards and some really awesome reprints as well. So hopefully you guys are just as excited as I am and definitely keep an eye on how those cards releases are going to affect the secondary market as well. Anyways guys, let's jump right into today's episode. All right, kicking things off, let's take a look at Alubur, the Jester of Despia. This is a secret rare out of Dawn of Majesty, which is a relatively new set, and it's a key piece of the Despia deck searching for a branded spell or trap card when it is summoned, as well as having the ability to bring itself out of the graveyard when a fusion of yours is destroyed. Now, the reason for this card being so hyped up is that there is a new fusion spell card called Branded Fusion, which allows you to summon an Albaz fusion monster by dumping materials directly from your deck, which is honestly kind of insane. It's basically like a fusion destiny, but instead it locks you into only summoning fusions from your extra deck for the rest of the turn, and this card is also searchable by Alubur. Because of this, we've seen Alubur shoot up in price from $35 to now $45, and I think that the card definitely has the potential to go up even further if the Fallen of Albaz deck starts to see results and competitive success over in the OCG. Alubur was reprinted in the Despia structure deck over in the OCG, but given that it's still extremely new here, we'll probably see it excluded and not be reprinted until the 2022 Megatons, which of course is going to drive the demand for this card, as more and more people need Alubur in order to play the rest of the deck. If you're wanting to look at playing with the new Fallen of Albaz cards that are coming out fairly soon, definitely make sure that you grab your copies of Alubur sooner rather than later. The next card here is a meta staple that we all definitely need to pay attention to. It is Cosmic Cyclone. So Cosmic Cyclone is currently seeing a lot of play in side decks as one of the more popular forms of back row removal this format. As a quick play spell, much like Twin Twisters, you can chain it to things like Imperial Order or Anti-Spell Fragrance and be able to play the game that turn, which is one of its advantages over something like Lightning Storm or Harpy's Feather Duster. But also you don't need to discard a card as cost the way that you would need to with Twin Twisters. However, it's also worth noting that it banishes the target rather than destroying it. With Destroy Phoenix Enforcer in the game now, people are playing Artifact Dagda with Artifact Scythe to lock your opponent out of the extra deck with DPE, and chaining Cosmic Cyclone to the DPE and banishing the set Scythe allows you to free up your extra deck and allow you to play the game. Now, interestingly enough, Cosmic Cyclone has had a ton of different printings, but all of them are steadily trending upwards in terms of price. The ultimate rares are of course crazy at $170 a piece, and with the secret rares you're looking at around $12 for the originals and $8 for the Megatin reprints. What's really noteworthy is that the ultras from Dual Devastator and then the multiple commons from those structure decks, all copies are going to run you at least $2 each as well, which is a decent amount for a card that has had multiple reprints like Cosmic Cyclone. This is definitely a card that you will want to pick up now if you can, while it's still fairly affordable especially if you're going to be playing against a lot of meta decks. Alright, so this is definitely a weird one, it's Yujo Friendship. So believe it or not, there is a virtual world deck that's running around that actually plays Yujo Friendship as a one of that you can dump with Beatrice. The reasoning is that there is a related card called Judgment of the Pharaoh, where if you have Yujo Friendship in the graveyard, you activate it, pay half your life points, then that turn your opponent cannot summon at all set or use or activate monster effects, so it's basically a turn skip on your opponent. Obviously it sounds extremely gimmicky and not like something you'd actually want to play, but maybe someone that's a lot better at Yu-Gi-Oh than me is onto something. Anyways, Yu-Gi-Oh Friendship is only available as a jump promo. It was actually released to the public multiple times. I think there were like two to three waves of things where you could get Yu-Gi-Oh Friendship. However, because it is only available as a jump promo, I believe it's still not able to be used in Europe. Definitely correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But despite that, this being such an old card where a lot of copies are probably damaged, a near mint copy is going to run you a whole $80 on TCG Player right now, which is honestly kind of wild. Do keep in mind that if this card does start to catch on, there's a really strong chance that it will get reprinted in an upcoming reprint set soon, especially so that Europe can finally get access to it. This is 100% the type of card that I would look to dump as soon as possible and get whatever maximum value you can for it. 
So this is one that I've noticed slowly moving up over the last several months. It is Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. So recently Appaloosa hasn't been seeing a ton of play the way it did a couple of years ago. It's still a great card that can provide multiple negations and is very easily accessible, but it just hasn't been a key piece in so many decks recently. Things like Sword Soul and Flow Wanderies just don't play it. And with a lot of people running cards like Infinite Impermanence and Gadarla, there are multiple ways to deal with this card already running around in the game. However, I generally like to think that when cards aren't seeing play is the best time to go ahead and grab them because that's when no one really cares about them and you can generally snag them for relatively cheap. And it's not like Appaloosa is a bad card, it's just something that isn't seeing a ton of play at the moment. So right now, original secret rare Appaloosas from Rising Rampage are going to cost you about $50, and then each the ultra rare and alternate art gold rare are around the $15 mark. Though I do remember last year being able to pick these up for between $5 to $10 each. Remember, the way that the Yu-Gi-Oh! market is nowadays, a year or two can be a really long time, especially for cards that are in such high demand. We've already seen these cards trending upwards without much of a clearly defined catalyst over the last year or so, so if one does come up, then expect them to shoot up in price even further. At this current price point, I wouldn't go out and buy a ton of them, but if you can pick them up here and there, the golds or ultras for around $10 each, I think that this card will be a really solid card to pick up and hold on to for the next little while. Next up is a card that I think kind of slipped under the radar for me, it's Hajun the Winged Mayakashi. So over in the OCG there is a new product coming out called the Secret Shiny Box, which brings with it support for a few different archetypes. One of those archetypes is the Mayakashi, who get an amazing trap card that lets you tribute a Mayakashi or Shurinoi Synchro monster to lock both players out of special summoning from the hand, deck, or extra deck for the rest of the turn. Obviously a really insane card. Because of this, I guess people are now looking at Mayakashi cards, and Hajun is one of the key starters for the deck, summoning another Mayakashi out of your deck and getting your Synchro climbing going. Now, Hajun has only the one printing from back in Hidden Summoners, which was a really bad set looking back at it, and Mayakashis have never really been anything more than a sort of gimmicky deck. However, Hajun is now going to run you $7 a piece on TCG Player at the moment for the one Secret Rare printing. I guess now people are thinking that Mayakashis might have some more potential, especially if you're going to play them with the Eldritch cards or maybe other new zombie support cards, so maybe there's something there. Anyways, it does look like the Mayakashi and zombie stuff is going to be reprinted in the OCG. It definitely depends on what set the new stuff gets imported to here, since we might also see Hajun reprinted in the TCG when that product comes out as well. Alright, so here's a card that I think might have some potential moving forward, it is Bahamut Shark. So by now you've all seen the Water Ixies support that was revealed over in the OCG, which grants them a couple of fish monsters that can special themselves so that they can be used as Ixies materials. The deck has a lot of really strong, really cool pieces, and even though it might not be a tier 1 deck or anything like that, I think it could be a really solid tier 2 strategy. Anyways, Bahamut Shark is of course a key piece for that deck, especially when you're going first since you can use it to bring out totally awesome from your extra deck for free, which is a free negation. That being said, I think it's worth paying attention to Bahamut Shark moving forward, so right now the secret rares are quite expensive, with the unlimiteds at 30 and the first editions at 40 on TCG Player, so I don't think it's quite realistic to invest in copies of those at the moment. However, what is worth noting is that the gold and super rare reprints are available and those are the cards only two other printings, each of which is only $4 each right now. It is kind of a 50-50, since remember, there is still a chance that we could see Bahamut Shark reprinted in the Legendary Duelist set itself when it comes here to the TCG, but if the card doesn't get reprinted, I could definitely see the lower rarity versions of the card shooting up in price, maybe to around $7 to $10. Because it is a gamble, I would never say that you should go out and buy cards like this actively. However, if you can pick them up here and there for maybe $2 each, or if you can grab them to round off some trades, I think this is a solid card to hold on to for a little bit, just in case and let it sit in your trade binder. Finally guys, we're gonna wrap things up by talking about B Trooper Scout Buggy. So this is a card that was actually really hyped up just a few months ago when everyone was talking about the insane potential that the B Trooper strategy had, with cards like Resonance Insect and Doom Dozer being highly sought after as old cards. However, even with the new cards from Dimension of Chaos, B Troopers have basically fallen off the face of the earth, not being able to hold up against Sword Soul, Flawanderies, and the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. 
Now, Scout Buggy was an expensive piece of the deck, the deck's only secret rare that was around $20 a piece. Now, however, this card is literally half that, as you can pick them up for only $10 on TCG Player at the moment. Now, I'm looking at this card based solely on the potential that the card and deck have shown us in the past. I think that there's definitely possibility for another wave of B Trooper support, and if the cards are just good enough, maybe that could be the push that the deck needs to become meta relevant, or at least tier 1.5. The other thing is that they are an insect deck, and remember, there is the new Insector support card coming in Grand Creators, so it's definitely possible that there could be some synergy between B Troopers and Insectors, where some sort of hybrid might actually be more viable than either strategy on its own. Anyways, given that the card's price has fallen by half for virtually no reason, I definitely think that Scout Buggy is a card that you should at least own a set of because it absolutely has the potential to go back to at least the $20 mark each. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. We have so much exciting stuff to look forward to in 2022. I can't help but look for cards that we should consider picking up now. Also guys, I do wish you all the best of luck with opening Brothers of Legend this weekend. I know I personally am really looking forward to picking up a Starlight Dragoon, a set of Ultra Godarlas. There's a ton of other awesome stuff in the set. I hope you guys are excited for it too. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's Market Watch episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button for me. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards we talked about today and what other cards are trending on the market or cards that you think that we should keep an eye on so I can cover them in a future episode as well. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button for all of the latest and greatest content from both me and Tombox here on the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST dot tv